Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to look at the forces uh, acting on a wire in a magnetic field. So we have looked at forces in gravitational fields, we've looked at forces in electric fields, now we're going to look at forces in magnetic fields. Now the electric fields and magnetic fields are similar in the fact that they are for both examples of the electromagnetic force. And we know from particle physics that the electromagnetic force is gonna act on charges. Okay, so that means that the magnetic force also acts on charges. Now, when we take the example of the magnetic field, we say that it can act in two ways. We can either have the um, charges being held in a wire where they can only flow in a single direction or we can say they're just free charges that are just um, been emitted by some sort of uh, electron gun or something just in open space and they're just electrons that can fly around wherever they want. In this video we're going to look at the forces acting on a wire uh, and how that changes um, when we look at forces acting on a free charge in the next video. So let's first set up some uh, sort of idea. Now to introduce this, we're first going to state what the formula is. Now a lot of you will have already seen this formula from GCSE and it is that the force is equal to B times I times L. Okay, so some people call this the Bill equation. And now we have to define what each of these things mean. Well, force is pretty obvious, so F is the force um, B is not so obvious, so B is known as the magnetic flux density. Now, this sounds very fancy and scientific and all kind of out there, but really this is just a very fancy way of saying the magnetic field strength. So, while you will always refer to it as the magnetic flux density, you can think of it as just the magnitude of the magnetic field strength, since that is essentially um, what it is. The higher the magnetic flux density, the stronger that magnetic field is, and so you will get um, a stronger force applied. Now, magnetic flux density is measured in Teslas, which we have as a T, but this is in Teslas, uh, just like the car named after Nikola Tesla. Um, and his work on these magnetic fields and electromagnetic induction, all that kind of stuff. Now I is again fairly straightforward, we've already known uh, for a while that I is just current and L is just the length of wire that is inside the magnetic field. Inside the magnetic field. Now there is a reason that we neglect most of the potentials and um, other things uh, with uh, magnetic fields, and that is mainly because of the math side of it. Magnetic fields are entirely based off of vectors. I would argue that so are electric fields and gravitational fields, but you can simplify those down and do them without the vectors. With magnetic fields, it's very hard to simplify them and not have um, vectors in magnetic fields. This is why we've kind of neglected most of it. But we do still have to think of these things as vectors. The magnetic flux density is still a vector. The uh, force is still a vector. And so what we have to say now is how do we handle these vectors? Because we should know from maths, if any of you are doing maths, there are two ways that we can multiply vectors. These are called the dot product and the cross product. And if we do a dot product, we end up with a scalar quantity. If we do a cross product, we end up with a vector quantity. But I'm gonna do a little bit of a side note here. If I were to do a cross product, so for example, if I say that I have this vector, which I'm gonna call A and underline because it's a vector, and I'm gonna multiply it by this vector, which I'm gonna call B, now, if you can imagine this in a 3D space, this is like a flat surface. So this is the equivalent of an XY plane. Then if I did A cross B, I end up with a perpendicular to both of these. So this is A cross B. 
Now, in the case of uh, f equals uh, b i l, the i is not here, but it's b cross l, which means the force actually has to be in a completely different direction to both the magnetic flux density and the um, the current, the direction the current is flowing in. And to understand which direction we have, um, we say this makes a left-handed system, and so we can apply something called Fleming's left-hand rule. Okay, now, in order to visualize what to do with Fleming's left-hand rule, I could draw out a hand. I'm not very good at that, so I'm just gonna show you this diagram. And this diagram represents um, which directions the force, the magnetic field, and the current are gonna flow in. And so we get this um, thing here that we usually call an FBI gun, okay? So we can have the force uh, here, the magnetic field here, and then the current here, um, and these will make this FBI gun, and this is a left-handed system. Now, for the magnetic field and the current, it's fairly straightforward to know which direction they're going in. We usually have notations um, for the magnetic field um, where we'll either have arrows which point in the direction that it's going in, uh, up or down, um, but it can also come in or out of the screen, right? So it can come towards us or it can go away from us. And for those, we use this kind of notation. And if it's coming towards us, we think of it like an arrow head. So this would be, if an arrow was to be fired at you, you would just see the arrow head coming towards you. And so this is out of the screen. And then the this would be if an arrow was fired away from you, you would see um, the fletching at the back and this is going into the screen. Okay, so now we have um, our ideas of um, how we can visualize these vectors. And now we need to look at an example of how could we actually measure the force um, that is exerted by a, um, exerted on a wire um, by a magnetic field. And to do this, we know that a force, a, a piece of equipment that could measure a force is either a Newton meter or a scale. And so we're gonna use a scale because that's gonna be fairly, uh, well, a lot easier to use than um, a Newton meter would be in this case. And so let's set up the force experiment. Okay, now the force experiment, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have um, a uniform magnetic field. Now, Again, I'm not great with the drawing, so you'll have to bear with. Um, so I'm gonna have a bar magnet on this side that is, let's have it being the, uh, the north side. Okay, so this is, if I get rid of these lines, this is the north side here. And then I'm gonna have a second bar magnet that's just here. Um, which is gonna be the south magnet, okay? And this is the south one, and this is the north one, which means I'm actually gonna get field lines that are going across like this. And I'm gonna put this whole system on top of a scale. This is a digital scale that is gonna read off um, the weight of this whole thing. Now, if I'm looking from above, okay, so this is um, just a general idea, and I'm gonna have a wire that's gonna travel through the center of this field where the um, field is going this way. If I'm looking um, from a top-down view, I'm gonna have north on this side, I'm gonna have south on this side, I have a uniform uh, B field going this way, which I'm gonna note with a B, and then I'm gonna have a current carrying wire um, traveling and the current is gonna travel in this direction. Now that we have this idea, we can set up a Fleming's uh, left-hand rule system to see which direction is the force gonna act in. So if I uh, use this to say um, B is gonna be in this direction, so 
So I'm going to try and draw this the best I possibly can. Let me draw it up here. So if you use your uh, left hand currently and try and line this up, B is going in this direction. I is going uh, in this direction, which actually means the force here is going to go down into the screen. Okay, so we have this kind of situation happening with the force, okay, where this is B field and this is uh, your current. When I say B field, I just mean magnetic field. And this means that if I have this set up here, the force of this wire is then going to push down onto the scales, and so the reading of the scales is going to increase. And we can use this to do a number of different things. We can know that the force here, we can measure that, so we can have the force. We can know the current by just putting an ammeter in series with this, so we can know the current, and we can measure the length of the ruler, so we can use this to actually measure what the magnetic flux density is between these two um, bar magnets. Now, the key with this is, if I were to change the direction of the current, so if I had a second view, or a second uh, experimental setup, and I change the position. So I say that I'm gonna still have a north on this side, still have south on this side. I still end up with these uniform field lines, but my current is now traveling in this direction. Then I have B going this way, I have current going this way, and this is gonna lead to the force coming out of the screen. So the force Sorry, this should be going into the screen, shouldn't it? So this one should be a cross, and this one should be a dot. So this is going down into the screen, and this one is coming uh, back out of the screen towards us. And what's happening there is that if the force of these magnets is now going to um, be pulling upwards off this scale, that means that the reading here is actually going to decrease. So it's both possible to see a decrease in the force based on how much is being pulled up and an increase in the force based on how much is being pulled down. And these then allow us to verify not only is this equation right because we can um, specify or we could set up our own experiment where we have a known magnetic flux density, we have a known current, a known length, and we measure the force, check if it's right. We can do that pretty uh, easily and then we'll know that that's right. And we also can tell that this left hand rule is right. So we can say that if we can visualize the um, reading on the scale, both increasing and decreasing by just changing the direction of the current, it must make a left-handed system. And if it makes a left-handed system, we verified that Fleming's left hand rule is correct. So I would say as a takeaway from this video, the big important things are that um, we can have this F equals B I L only when a current is flowing through a wire and that wire is inside a magnetic field. And the biggest thing probably would be this idea of Fleming's left hand rule, since this is gonna help you out a lot in the exam, being able to visualize what direction the force is acting in. Thank you for watching.